Hey guys, Minuit Tech Systems have become more and more popular and we've been wanting to build one on the channel for a while now. They can definitely have their challenges due to their smaller form factor, but let's take a few steps back and see how we ended up right here. Welcome back guys. So I'm gonna prep a few things on the case to make my life easier later on. I'm sure heaps of you have built systems before in the past, including the mini ITXs. So you know the challenges include you know, fitting in all the components and also the placement of the parts as well can be different to a mid tower case. So once we get a little bit of a look inside the case, you know, we get the power supply mounted at the front and these two gaps here indicate that the motherboard and the graphics card are gonna be mounted parallel meaning the graphics cards will be mounted vertically with the riser cable. And that's the reason these smaller cases can still fit in larger or even full size parts inside. So with our case all prepped, let's have a little bit of a look at the rest of the parts. So I've gone with the B550i Gaming Mini ITX motherboard. It's got Wi-Fi, all the internal connections which I need for this specific build. It also supports the Ryzen 5000 series, which is gonna let me use this 5600X. So it's always important to build as much as we can on the motherboard while it's still outside the case, and we do start with the CPU first. So this processor has six cores and 12 threads, so it'll definitely handle some of the more demanding games, and also be great for things like multitasking as well. With the AMD CPUs, we do have to be careful as the pins are on the back here, and they are fragile, we don't wanna bump those. And there is also a little symbol just in the corner here on the CPU. Um, and there's also a matching one on the motherboards. This will actually show us which way it goes into the board, make our life a little bit easier. Again, just be very careful as we place the CPU in. Once it's in the correct position, it'll just simply slide in there. No wiggle room on this one and it's all good. We'll just lock in place with this retention bracket. So up next will be our memory. For our system today, we have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. So this is compatible with our motherboard, which is always a good thing. Easy way to install your RAM sticks in, we just line up these notches with the notch in the motherboard as well. Once we line those up, there we go. Place it on top and we push down on both sides. I like to push in the back one first as we don't have a visible lock at the front. And you want to just hear that audible click as well. There we go. and. All installed. We'll get the second one in as well. This RAM also has a tested speed of 3600 megahertz, which is nice for DDR4 memory. It should work well in our system as well. In terms of storage, I've just opted for the single one terabyte drive. Should be enough room for a lot of games and applications once our system is complete. Our motherboard does support two NVMe slots. Got one at the front and one at the back. I've opted to use the one at the front as it is PCIe 4.0 and it's also got a built-in heat sink at the top here just so things keep things a little bit cooler. So when we install the M.2 it's pretty easy. We just line up these two notches and put on in a little bit of an angle here. So about 30 degrees normally does the trick. And then we should be able to just push it in. It's a little bit of a click once it's in place and we lower it, fits onto the screw, we know it's in good. So another reason I went with this specific CPU is that it does come with an included cooler which will fit underneath the 70mm clearance that we have. And probably a good time to mention as well that there is two versions of this case here. So this is the air-cooled model which is what I have. There's also a liquid-cooled version which is about 33mm taller that allows for a radiator clearance at the top there. With the brackets removed, we can now install our cooler. Something to keep in mind is RAM clearance is definitely a thing. As the AMD logo sticks out a little bit more, I'm gonna position it away from the RAM, just to help with that clearance. So we're just gonna line up the screws with those holes which the brackets left over. Now, once it's lined up, do keep in mind that the thermal paste will spread. So try not to push on any one side more than the other. So with our motherboard all prepped, it's time to move it to the case. First thing will be, of course, the I.O. shield. So like I mentioned, with mini ITEX cases, the components can be you know, slightly in different places than normal. So with the vertically mounted GPU, with the riser cable, it's actually gonna result in the motherboard being upside down. So we need to make sure that the I.O. shield is the correct way in. So like I mentioned at the start, this case does only support a vertically mounted graphics card, but we have our expansion slot at the top here. So that's where this riser cable is gonna come into play. We can kind of think about this like an adapter for our expansion slot. So we're gonna connect it. And it's actually gonna give us an expansion slot in the back. And that's gonna actually allow us to mount that graphics card vertically. 
So due to the placement of our power supply inside the Mini ITX, we're going to need this extension cable to power it. We want to just route that one first. Now what I've opted for today is a 550 watt 80 plus gold SFX power supply. We can actually fit an SFXL inside, they're normally about 20 mils longer, we want as much room as we can for the cable management. So having that 80 plus gold certification means that this is going to run at 90% efficiency or higher, which is a really good thing. Now before I actually mount the power supply inside, I find this a good time to actually connect all our cables and being fully modular means that I can actually pick and choose exactly which cables we need and that just gives me a little bit less to cable manage at the end. Alrighty, now I know that the cables don't look super amazing right now, but there's going to be a few more added once we put our fans in. So I like to do all the cable management together at the end. So I'm going to move everything to the side and we'll prep that radiator bracket. So our radiator panel here is where we're going to house these two fans and we're going to want them as exhaust as well. So we're going to have the uh, CPU cooler and the power supply pulling air in from this side and on the opposite side once we have our graphics card that's going to be pulling air in as well. So these exhaust fans are going to help pull that hot air straight out and just help complete the airflow in the case. So while it's still outside the case I think it's a good time for us to connect our front panel cables. So for this system there's three of them, I'm going to do that now. So she's not looking too good right now, but it's okay, we're going to fix her up. Just a little tip for this specific case, so by not screwing in the radiator bracket, we have a little bit of leeway to work with. Let me just squeeze in some of the cables at the top here, so just a little tip to make it easier for you. Let's get it looking nice. So we want to try and keep as many cables off the motherboard as we can. There will always be some, but we just try and get them straight out of there. And there will be sections in a mini ITX where we do need to have some cables because it is a bit of a smaller size. So underneath the power supply, we've tried to group as many of the cables as possible just to make like a designated section. But it's a good thing that I did have the radiator a little bit looser because I tried utilizing the area behind the power supply for some of the cables. And just being able to remove the radiator, get my fingers in there made it a lot easier. There was even a section where I just loosened the power supply just a little bit, once again, we don't want the cables too tight in there, so if you're following along at home, don't be afraid to remove some components, you know, just to help get that cable around. So the last thing for us to install in our system is the graphics card, which is a pretty big part when it comes to building a gaming system. Today we've gone with the RX 6600. It is a bit of a smaller card, in this case does support a much larger one. This one's got eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, so it'll help with some of those more demanding games. We've still got our expansion slot here from the riser cable. We're ready to mount this vertically. Let's get it in. With this case specifically, we actually have these two GPU holders. So we're just going to place these in, in between here and this bracket here. It's going to hold it securely in place. With the installation of our graphics card, our system's finally complete. It was definitely a bit challenging getting it to this stage. All those small parts inside the Mini ITX can be a bit challenging, but totally worth the reward at the end. I'm going to put these side panels back on and power up. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you are building your own little Mini ITX system at home, hopefully this helped you out a little bit. There was definitely some parts that we did skim over. It wasn't a full tutorial. So if you have any questions, leave me a comment down below and I'll try and help you out as best I can. I'll also leave a list of all the parts for this system right here. If you want to find out more, see how this thing runs, you can find that out down below. Hope you all have a lovely day and I'll see you all next time.